I'm Roy Silver. Great to meet you. I'm Dan Waters, CEO. Great to meet you too, Roy. I'm just going to go for a wee. As CEO of this company, I should say that whoever gets this job, it will not be the prat that took a pee break mid-interview. Isn't that right, Hodge? Isn't this a tiny bit ridiculous? It's a FaceTime interview. We need to practice on FaceTime. Can we practice later, Ags? I've got to, um, go to church. <laughs> Morning, ladies. Trissy, darling. Peggy brings her finest dandelion chardonnay. A and hot from my test kitchen, raspberry and kale. Wow, uh, Liz, your ingenuity knows no bounds. <laughs> oh, ladies, please. This is Sunday service, not a pop concert. My sermon today is focused on what the Lord tells us about the nature of enduring love. Since when did a miserable sinner like you get religion? The new curate's take on God-type stuff really makes sense to me spiritually. Plus, he is fit AF. But whatever times we live in, unconditional love, love that lasts, still requires sacrifice. Sorry. Agatha? Quote John, chapter 15, verse 13. Don't tell me you're in love with a new curate as well. Me? No. Oh, absolutely not. Not remotely interested in this smoking hot vicar. To lay down one's life for one's friends. Let us pray. We pray for the success of the approaching Carsley charity duck race. We pray for the continued success of Reverend Bloxby's missionary work in Nigeria and his safe return home soon. Not too soon, I hope. Yes, we're fine with Tristan. Thanks, God. Shh. And we pray also for Mrs. Sarah Bloxby and her aunt Elizabeth, who died last week at the age of 91. Thank you. Thank you, Tristan. Thank you. Bill's got a new girlfriend. Gemma will be gutted. I wouldn't worry about her. I'll be over by the time she gets back from my beaver. His scary mum always scares his girlfriends off. James Lacey. And bang on cue, I feel that strange mix of weirdly excited and yet, oh my God, I'm going to throw up. You don't have to talk to him. Well, I can't ignore him forever, can I, Roy? You haven't. By my count, you've ignored him for about 45 mm. seconds. Uh, no, Freddy. Roy Silver, non-believer, but I have a feeling I could convert you. Sorry, I mean, you can convert me. Well, here we are again. <laughs> At the church. Where you dumped me. Really? Yes. Bit of a cheap shot. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but I was wondering if uh, maybe... Shall we go out for dinner? Why? Uh, oh, I, I don't know. I just, I, I thought maybe just process our emotions. Talk about you and me. Is there a you and me? I thought there was just a you and him. Him? Who's him? I'm not blind, Agatha. I can see what's happened. I don't need to process my emotions, whatever that means. I, let's just get on with our lives, shall we? <gasps> Denzel Wilkes. Yes, yes. I know who you are. Yeah, I know you know. But today I stand before you not as Detective Chief Inspector Denzel Wilkes, Cotswolds crime fighter, but as plain Citizen Wilkes, standing for election as Chairman of the Parish Council. I hope I can count on your support. James. Perhaps we ought... Do you think we should talk about Cyprus? Talk? Why? Because in case there was anything that you needed to share... Why is everyone processing and sharing all of a sudden? This is Carsley, not California. <laughs> Fair enough. How about your way, Lacey? How was that? Oh, depressing. You know, I think James and I need to put a little bit of space between us. Like, for example, Wiltshire. Please, Roy, let's get drunk tonight. Oh, I've got um, my interview tonight, remember? 
Your young curate seems to have uh, quite the following. Yeah, well, I'm not a member. And if you're any friend of mine, you won't be joining either. Mm. Let's get into her. Mm, let's think. Huge congregation, collection plate overflowing. Could it be that Tristan is whipping her husband's ass? Mm, no. Sarah's not like that. And who's that little minx? Don't know, but she's wasting the time with Tristan because he is gay. Yeah, you hope he is. Roy's gaydar never lies. Apart from that one time, it did lie, but I did apologise to all three guardsmen profusely. Uh, Mrs. Bloxby. Mrs. Bloxby. <sighs> I, um, just wanted to say how sorry I was to hear about your aunt. Oh, well, thank you for your concern. My poor aunt is reminded that you cannot buy happiness or good health. Her passing was a blessed release. I'm sensing some tension between us. Can I make you supper tonight? Just to clear the air? A desperate need not to be alone tonight means that I must accept your invitation to dinner. I haven't invited you to dinner. Well, if you're going to be pedantic about it. How does 8.30 sound? Sounds perfect. But as friends, Charlie Boy, like we agreed, just two friends having dinner, where for once I am not the dessert. OK. I can do that. Good. Probably. Mm -hmm. Manly hug, mm -hmm. with no wandering hands. Hi. So glad you could make it. Uh, I'm not one of your groupies. Uh, yeah, oh, right, of course. Mm -hmm. You're, yep, that's right. Thank you very much, old chum. We're through here. <laughs> Is this actually the friends zone, or is it maybe the friends with benefits zone? Better? Here we go. Cheers. Glass of wine? No, thank you. Reverend Bloxby and I choose not to drink on Sundays. Uh, of course. <laughs> I probably shouldn't either, but... Uh, Mrs Bloxby, I owe you an apology. My curacy in Bristol wasn't a very happy one. I didn't know that. I'd given up a pretty successful career in banking to put my heart and soul into helping some of my poorest parishioners, and one night I was pretty badly beaten up by some of the same young men that I'd been trying to help, and I was lost, demoralised, and then coming here to the parish that you and your husband built up to be embraced so warmly by your congregation, I think I let it go to my head. I'm really sorry. <laughs> Apology accepted. I only feel except mine for being so ungenerous. <laughs> you know, I think I'll have that glass of wine after all. You know, I was wondering, would it help to talk a little bit about your aunt? You know, you're a problem. You don't know how to be friends with a woman. If sex is off the menu, you have absolutely nothing to say. <laughs> that's not entirely fair. You just haven't given me the chance, that's all. Oh, I see. OK. Well, giving you the chance right now. I wonder who'll win Wimbledon.
Smartphones are very good, aren't they? Okay, I'm leaving. Oh, Agatha. I was sad to lose her. Of course. Yeah, I was her only surviving relative. Ah. So I'm guessing that means you have to handle her estate all on your own. That is tough. Yeah, I'm dreading it. Mrs. Bloxby. Uh, call me Sarah. Sarah. If you want some advice investing your aunt's money, I do still know about finance. Oh, that's very kind of you. It would be my pleasure. Well, the solicitor says that with death duties and legal bills, there'll be next to nothing left, and anything that is left is going to the donkey sanctuary, so... What a pity. Mm. It's a uh, parishioner. Hi. Of course, yeah. Um, just give me a moment. Yeah. Sarah? I can explain. Oh. Sarah. No, don't, Sarah, me. You're a traitor. <coughs> now, when were you going to tell me? The bishop told me not to. This parish is our home. It is everything we've worked for, and you've just stolen it from us. meeting you here. Morning. How was the interview? Smashed it. But Aggie, if I get this job, I'm gonna have to, um... You're gonna have to... what? I'm gonna have to... James! What are you... Has something happened to Sarah? Police business coming through, coming through. Sarah? This way. Sarah! Now, you know very well that Sarah Bloxby is not capable of murder. Well, I hope not. But Tristan Dellen was found murdered in her house with her knife. And she tells me they had dinner last night. Alone. Oh, come on, you're not suggesting that she... But she had feelings for him. Why not? Half the village were in love with him. Tell me about it. But not Sarah. She hated him. When I say hate, I think I meant that they weren't best mates, but basically she thought he was a pretty good bloke. Oh, dear. Did you see any strangers hanging around the vicarage last night? No. Although there was someone wearing a bright yellow parka walking by Tristan's lodgings as I left. Mm. I've got a campaign meeting. I'll be back later. Goodbye, Mrs. Bloxby. And remember, if I'm elected, I promise you this, and I promise it from the heart, I will represent your interests whether you're in prison for murder or not. We found this letter in Tristan's rubbish bin. Do you know anything about it? I've got to find out who killed Tristan Delon and, and clear her name. But let's go back to mine and we will review the evidence. Agatha, can I have a word in... Private? I, mean, I can't hear a thing.
much as I care about Sarah, as much as I'd like to help, I don't think we'd make a great team at the moment, so... This time you're going to have to go it alone. Yes, yes. You're right. Yep. Agatha, I got your text. How can I help? Bill says that Tristan approached the bishop and suggested he replace Jez as vicar, and the bishop agreed. So Sarah had a motive. She had a big motive. She was going to lose everything. OK, Roy is running this case conference in the campaign to prove that Sarah Bloxby did not kill Tristan DeLong. Item one, this photo from the Parsley Parish magazine, slightly undermined by Sarah looking like a serial killer. That's better. So, who are these ladies, or as I like to call them, murder suspects? On the left, Peggy Slither, right, Liz Jellop. Uh, no, 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 the, the caption's wrong. That's Liz Jellop on the left and Peggy Slither on the right. From now on, Mrs Bockle does not get to do the captions. Liz Jellop, I know from Lady Society meetings, she's a millionaire, single, started Jellop's Jams in her kitchen and out of nowhere became incredibly successful. Word is that she is standing for chairperson of the local parish council. That's Peggy Slither on the right. She lives over in Ancombe, widower and Liz Jellop's best friend. But listen, should we not be concentrating more on Tristan's enemies and not just his adoring female fans? What about his adoring male fans? Sorry? Oh, Roy thinks Tristan may have been gay. Male or female, who else would want Tristan dead apart from Sarah Bloxby? Bill said Tristan had mentioned to Sarah that he'd been badly mugged in his previous parish in Bristol, which is why he took the job here. Right. I've come to make sure you don't start meddling about in my investigation again. Detective Constable, warn her off. Oh, Sir Charles. Oh, I'm glad to see you here, actually. I was hoping to have a word with you with my uh, other hat on. Yeah, no doubt you're aware of the impending elections for the parish council. Now, the patronage of poshos carries great weight. Would you do me the honour of endorsing my candidacy? Ah, oh, well, thank you. Oh, you won't regret it now. Let's get a picture for the uh, motor. Oh, come on, Bill. You know we work well together. Yes, we do, absolutely. But not this time. It's too personal with Sarah. Exactly. Stay out of police business. See you on the campaign trail, Your Highness. Boy, we're going to Bristol. Google Tristan Delon mugging and see which church she was curate at. Aggie, I, I can't be your sidekick on this one, I'm afraid. I I've just got a second interview for that job and they're flying me over. Over to where? Swindon. Swindon? Can you fly to Swindon? Oh. Probably just get the train. I'll go to Bristol with you. I want to see this murderer caught. And an innocent woman spared a lifetime in prison. Plus, there's a new cocktail bar in Clifton I fancy trying. This is a purely platonic murder investigation, Charlie boy. No flirting. St Mary's. That's the church that Tristan was curate at the time he was monked. Let's go in there and we will interview the vicar. <gasps> How did those two duffers get there before me? Yes, uh, Tristan was beaten up by louts in the youth group that he ran. But that's all I know. I, I, mean, I can't tell you anything. I haven't already told the police. So you didn't tell the police everything? Well, yes. I mean, no, I mean, I'm not hiding anything. I, I, I think you should go. Wait. <laughs> Did you know that Tristan was gay? How did you know? One has instincts. Oh, Roy does. Gay, well, uh, maybe. But certainly bisexual. There was one man, a, a rich businessman, who showered him with gifts, took him to fancy places. But that all finished around the time Tristan was beaten up. Can you tell us the name of this rich businessman? No. No, I, I don't know who he was. And I shouldn't have said as much as I have. Please. 
She knows who that businessman is. Definitely. I think the answer to Tristan's murder lies in Bristol. If I have learned anything from these Carsley crimes, is the answer generally lies in Carsley. <gasps> Stop the car! The white car! Parked outside the pub! That is the same car that was parked outside Tristan's house the night he was murdered! Oh, Jellop. Raspberry was <gasps> Liz! Oh, Agatha! Just been handing out free vote gel at raspberry and Prosecco ah. jams in the pub. Have one. Please tell me you're investigating Paul Tristan's murder. Oh, I've started investigating already. Excellent. Best news I've had all day. Why was your car parked outside Tristan's house the night he was murdered? What? Uh, it wasn't. Um, uh, I've got to go. I saw it myself, uh, Liz. What were you up to? I, oh. See? Told you the answer, Leon Carsley. Now, come on, hurry up! Sorry. Stitch. You be careful, Agatha. Oh, don't worry, she's harmless! Oh! Oh! Tristan had a dinner date with me that night as well. When he didn't turn up, I went round to his house. And there he was, cozying up with the vicar's wife. She's married. She's very happily married. There was really nothing between them. I knew that. Or at least Liz, the happy jam maker, knew that. But Liz, the infatuated spinster, thought that every woman he met would steal him away. If it makes you feel any better, Sarah said the only reason that he was interested in her was because of a whole load of money that she didn't actually have. <laughs> well, he did make investments for me. And then I realised that he was only interested in my money. Did that make you angry? Have you ever been in love, Sir Charles? Well, you know, possibly. Well, I never had in my kitchen, inventing new jams. That was all I needed to be happy, until I met Tristan. But as he said in his last sermon, love is about sacrifice. Reverend Grace Lansing said that he was having an affair with a rich businessman. No. No, he was flamboyant. And Grace Lansing might say that he was gay because he wouldn't have sex with her. But he did have sex with me. A lot. There was nothing homosexual about Tristan to love. Liz Jellop, Reverend Grace Lansing, and mystery dodgy businessman. All three of them in love with Tristan DeLon. All three of them new murder suspects who are not called Sarah Bloxby. Good day's work. How's my case going? No idea. I don't know. Of course you wouldn't. Relax. I'm not here about that. I'm here about Sarah. She's still a suspect, but we're releasing her. But Agatha, she can't face spending a night in the vicarage alone. It had to be the Reverend Grace, or Liz Jellop, who put that note through your door. Whoa. It's Downton Abbey. Indeed. So, 
Let's see if Lord Grantham was having an affair with the bisexual curate. <laughs> We're here to see Lord Grantham. Ah, uh, Richard Vincer. We don't have an appointment. I'm afraid unless you do, you won't be able to see him. I'm Ellen Partle, his executive assistant. Well, Ellen Partle, if you could just tell him that Agatha Raisin is here to talk to him about Tristan Delon, I suspect we might not need an appointment. Sometimes you just have to play the local celebrity card. Mr. Binzer doesn't know who you are or what you're talking about. Would you tell Mr. Binzer that Sir Charles Fraith is here to see him? Sometimes it helps to play the local celebrity card. Oh, hilarious. New money is always impressed by old money. Even when the truth is, old money has no real money left. Do sit down. Mr. Binzer will be with you in a second. Oh, and uh, just in case you were thinking of blackmailing him, I will be recording your entire conversation. Mm. New money not so impressed by old money that he doesn't think old money would strip to blackmail. Excuse Ellen's overprotector, Mr. Charles. If you can't trust an old Darwinian, who can you trust? Ah, so you went to Darwin too? Uh, I wish. Now, I'm a Hilton grammar man. But we played you at Rugger. <laughs> Good show. I must say, I'm very impressed with what you've done to Carsley Manor. Very impressed by what you've done with Barfield Hall. <laughs> uh, do you think we could maybe interrupt this landowner's love-in just to talk about what we came here to talk about? So, were you a friend, or, sorry to be blunt, a lover of the late Tristan Delon? A friend, yes. But a lover, no. Can I ask... How did you meet him? He was raising money for a youth group he ran from his church in Bristol. Tristan was very charismatic, persuasive. Do you have children, Sir Charles? No. Well, none that he knows of. Tristan felt like the son I never had. I gave him £10,000 towards new premises for his youth group. Took him to dinner a few times. Even bought him clothes. But soon he wanted more. And more. I paid a visit to St Mary's Church and the vicar, Reverend Grace Lansing. Reverend Grace said the youth group met in the church hall. There were no new premises. And when I called Tristan and asked him for my money back, he said he didn't have it anymore and wanted even more money not to tell my wife we were having an affair. Sadly for him, my wife is now my ex-wife and couldn't care less who I have an affair with. Or in this case, didn't have an affair with. <laughs> And that was the last I had to do with Tristan DeLon. I hope that helps. Oh, I'm uh, sponsoring the duck race. So I'm sure I'll see you both again at the Castley Hotel. I believe him. Of course you do. You chaps played rugger together. I didn't play rugger, actually. Oh, well, that makes sense. I played squash. Squash? Hmm. I've not played for ages. Rather miss a good hard game of squash. Just two opponents up against a wall. Smell of sweat. Well, don't look at me. Our squash playing days are over. No, oh, that's a shame. All I'm saying is that maybe it was his henchman that beat Tristan up that time. Vincent made his money in tech. Computer nerds don't have henchmen. He's a red herring. The truth is, Tristan was using, two-timing and blackmailing every woman he came under his spell. Which reminds me, we need to track down that woman that Tristan was talking to after the service. Which woman? He was talking to about 12. The glamour puss, Miss Sex on Legs, wears Ray-Bans to church and looks annoyingly younger than I do. I didn't see her. But I'm very much looking forward to questioning her. Where do we find her? I have absolutely no idea. But for now, we are going to Ancombe to talk to Peggy Slither.
spending a lot of time together. Bristol the other day. What are you up to? We're not up to anything apart from simply enjoying each other's company and getting out of the village for a bit. There's a whole world outside Carsley. It's called the Cotswolds. And for too long, Carsley has been dominated by the Cotswolds. Well, I'll say no more. Uh, freedom for Carsley. Let's crush the oppressor. Thanks for that, comrade inspector. Personally, I'm just here for a private word with Agatha. <laughs> and I'm just here for a private word with Charlie. Too soon for Charlie. We'll work on that. I have a new girlfriend called Alice. We're very happy. This is very sweet. But I'm usually more help with unhappy, cheated upon, and in love with an emotionally unavailable commitment fool. I'm not after relationship advice, thanks. Especially from... Anyway, as you know, my mum is very sweet and lovely. Did I know that? Yes, I did know that. But Alice is very shy and scared of meeting her. So I was thinking, before Alice meets my mum, just to build up her confidence, she could meet my surrogate mum. That's a very good idea. Who's your surrogate mum? Well... <gasps> Me? What? Am I not more of a surrogate slightly older sister? Yes, that's exactly what I thought. Good. Glad we're on the same page. We'll bring her over for dinner tonight, then. Thanks. Excuse me. Hello? Mum. OK. His mum. I mean, seriously? Fuck Wilkes, says Squire of Carsley, Lord of the Land. That might be overdoing it a bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've had a thousand printed, so after they've all gone up, we'll have a rethink. Yeah. Thanks. That was the station. There was a white Volkswagen belonging to Liz Jellop parked outside <gasps> Tristan's on the night he was killed. Really? 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 Tristan also made a date with Liz Jellop that night, but he stood her up. She was in unrequited love with him. I knew it. We didn't know it. Or anything else. Clueless. Agatha. Sir Charles, we don't care how you acquired any information, but if you do know something, please share it now. Bill! We know nothing about anything, but if we find out something about anything, then you will certainly be the first to know. Hello. Darling. It's Peggy Slither. <gasps> Who's that? It's, it's... My dentist. Agatha? Teeth need a clean. I have secret information about Tristan Delon. Tell no one and come alone. I know she said come alone, but would you mind staying here? Just in case she turns out to be a psychopath. Agatha, sweetie, so lovely to see you. <laughs> Have a wine. And it's homemade. Not really. You're fine. Thank oh, you. never drink alone. As my mate Liz Jellop always used to say before she stopped drinking, and I didn't. Come on, sit down. Not there! Mm. My husband died in that chair. Massive heart attack right in front of me. Sorry to hear that. Don't be. I hated him. I waited ten minutes before I called the ambulance just to make sure he'd croaked. Oh, the stories I could tell, if I could remember them. One for me, and one for you. You said you had some secret information about Tristan Delon. And I do, my darling. His real name was Terence Biles. What do you make of that? Why would he change his name? Boy, was very ambitious, as you know. Didn't think Bishop Biles had a ring to it. He was right. Hmm? Oh, don't go. I made dinner. Were you in love with Tristan Terence? No. Oh, I fancied the pants off him, but I knew it wouldn't lead anywhere. Unlike Liz, my poor deluded best friend, women like me and Liz, oh, I 
you, Agatha, sweetie, we're too old. Or too female for Tristan Delon. Not a psychopath, just a lonely lush. I doubt that she could sober up long enough to kill anyone. So, Tristan's real name was Terence Biles. Mm -hmm. He changed it. Well, to be fair, if my name was Biles, I think I'd change it too. <sighs> Am I getting old? We're all getting old. <sighs> it's just that some of us are getting old faster than others. I'm joking. I've always thought you were rather beautiful. Only rather? How rude. Hi! I'm Bill's surrogate, slightly older sister. Come in. <sighs> this is nice. Have a seat. Now go easy, she's very shy. <laughs> Would you like a drink, Alice? Honey? What? No, tonic water, please. Mm. Alice doesn't really drink alcohol. So, uh, Alice, what do you do for a living? I'm the PA to a managing director in town. Have been for years. Mum's gonna love Alice. I don't know why she's so scared. I know. Oh. She's going to have Alice for breakfast. I'm fine. You OK? Mm -hmm. So, Charles Fraith, is it not? Yes. Can I ask your opinion as a gentleman? Of course. Too much cleavage for a funeral? I'm glad you approve. Now, if you'll excuse me. There's my husband's grave. I need to go and dance on it. Reverend Grace, can I just thank you for putting that little knot through my door? I don't know what you're talking about. Why did you lie about knowing Richard Vincer? And why didn't you tell us that Tristan had scammed 10,000 pounds from him? Because I'd already been indiscreet enough. And because Richard Vincer's a very powerful man. Look, I've, I've said nothing to the police about him, and please, I'm begging you, if they ask, you heard nothing from me. So what happened to the money? Tristan said that he no longer had it. I don't know. Um, Tristan did have reckless appetites. Not just women, but all men. Drugs, too. I mean, I always suspected he'd blown the money on cocaine and pills, and that the men who mugged him were actually his dealers. Hmm. Can I ask you a question that I have asked pretty much every other woman in the Cotswolds? Mm. Were you in love with Tristan Dillon? No. I mean, I cared about him. But if I loved him, it was... Well, like a mother. How do you know the Reverend Grace Lanting? What? And what were you doing sniffing around in Bristol? Do I need to remind you that withholding information is a criminal offence? <laughs> oh, did you go to Bristol to interview the Reverend Grace? Mm -hmm. Answer the question, or I will arrest you for... Obstruction. Obstruction of justice. Yes, she did. We both went to visit Reverend Grace, and a bunch of other vicars, to be honest, but not as part of the investigation. We're getting married. That's what we were doing in Bristol. Not breaking the law, but planning the happiest day of our lives, won't we, darling? Yes, darling, and I'm absolutely thrilled about it. Oh, that's cracking news. Good for you. I'm good for our campaign. Family values. Well, feel free to congratulate us, Lacey, any time you like. Married. Really? What is this, some kind of, I don't know, weird ploy to just... Try and get me into bed. Which would you prefer, prison or being pretend engaged to me? Hmm, it's a tough choice. Well, I'm sorry, it's all I could come up with at the time. Congratulations. I think. Maybe. Yes, thank you. Who, who is that woman? Oh, uh, Sharon or Charlotte something. All I know is she was married to that millionaire who bought the huge derelict mansion just outside the village. Carsley Manor? Yeah. Which makes her? Mrs. Bin, sir. 
Not anymore, thank God. I'm Charlotte Belinge these days. I am a private detective investigating the murder of Tristan Delon. How well did you know him? Not as well as he would have liked. I'd recently divorced when we met. I was flattered by his attentions. Is Tristan's funeral really the place to discuss such things? No. Ah, uh, where could we, uh... I, uh, do want to ask you a few more questions. I'm so excited. Oh, damn it. Uh, I don't believe for a second that you're in love with Sir Charles Frace. Well, you are just going to have to believe it because it is absolutely true. She doesn't look much like a ruthless murderer. I don't think she is a ruthless murderer. We ran a check on her financial affairs. The day Tristan died, she found out she was going bankrupt. Because of him, she's lost everything. We're bringing her in for questioning. Oh, not now, Bill. I mean, she's clearly guilty of being taken for a fool, but look, she loved him. Don't make this day any darker for her than it already is. I can't keep breaking the rules just to please you. Question her tomorrow. What difference is it going to make? Bill! Bill! I, uh, might have been keeping something from you and Wilkes. If you're going to question anyone right now, it should probably be a businessman named Richard Bincer. I said I didn't want to be disturbed. Richard Bincer, we'd like you to accompany us to the station to answer some questions in connection with the murder of Tristan Delon. Oh, big picture. I love those big pictures. When I'm elected, I'm going to hang me one of those bad boys behind my desk at City Hall. Village Hall. Liz, are you all right? I need to speak to someone about what happened to Tristan. Oh, James. Oh, what do you want? Agatha, I... Agatha. Lacey? Fraith? Now, boys. What are you doing paying visits to my fiancé? If I want to pay visits to my ex-fiancé, I will. And there's nothing you can do about it. Are you fighting over me? Don't fight over me. I forbid you to fight over me. It's not worth it. You're not worth it. You're even more not worth it than I'm not worth it. No, wait a minute. I am worth it. What does Lacey want? That's a question I have been asking myself for quite some time. <sighs> oh, more to the point, what do you want? Ah, well, um, I thought as we were getting engaged, you should have an engagement ring. <laughs> <laughs> it was given back to me by one of my exes after we broke up, or to be more accurate, thrown in my face. How romantic. Mm. Mind you, I think I've got a few old engagement rings knocking about the cottage somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> no! Not now, Bill, unless, of course, you're calling me to tell me that you've arrested Richard Bincer for murder. That's not why I'm calling you. Liz Jellop's been murdered. Drowned in a vat of her own jam. <sighs> Sarah's story is that Liz Jellop rang her distressed. She went round to her house, but found her already dead. Jam everywhere, which is why she was covered in it. 
which is obviously telling the truth. I mean, what possible motive would Sarah have for killing Liz Jellop? Liz Jellop's support for Tristan almost resulted in Jez losing his parish. Even you have to admit that she's still a person of interest in this investigation. Meanwhile, as a result of your information, a respected local businessman and great mate of the Chief Constable has given us a statement about his perfectly innocent friendship with Tristan Delon. Yeah, I'm sure he has. Where was he last night? After he left the station, Mr. Bincer worked late with his assistant, Ellen Partle. You know, Bince is mad as hell about being dragged into all of this. <laughs> and the Chief Constable's mad as hell too. Well, I'm not scared of either of them. Have you met the Chief Constable? She's terrifying. Seriously. I just wish I hadn't stopped you taking Liz Jellop in for questioning. If I hadn't, she wouldn't have been at the cottage alone and she would have been alive. You can't know that for sure. You can't blame yourself for that. Or maybe you could blame yourself a bit. But now I must address the elephant in the room. I know what you're all thinking. Liz Jellop was running against Detective Chief Inspector Denzel Wilkes and he murdered her so he could become chairman of the parish council. Uh, I don't think anyone was thinking that. No, no, no. No one is above the law, Detective Constable Wong. So, take me down to the station for questioning and I warn you got a very weak alibi. Well, I shall go and see Charlotte, see what she has to say. Well, in an attempt to be a better person, I have agreed to help Sarah with the preparations for the great Carsley duck race. Kiss me. What? Sarah's watching. A real fiancé would kiss a real fiancé goodbye on the lips. What are you getting, mate? I'll take it. Hello, James. All right, if I go in and get started. Why is he even here? Ah. Uh, did I somehow forget to mention that James has had us out today? Yes, somehow you definitely did. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I just, I don't want you and James to lose that friendship. I, I, I know you're really happy with Charles. Why don't you come to the vicarage tonight? For supper, we can toast your engagement then. Yes, let's do that. That's a lovely idea. Tristan was beautiful, but in the end, jealous and threatening. And I'd had enough of that with my ex-husband. You mean Richard Bincer? Well, he's the only ex-husband I've got. So far, anyway. Sorry, yes, it's just that I didn't think he was that kind of man. I mean, admittedly, at first, we suspected he may have had Tristan beaten up for blowing all of his money. What? Tristan spent all of Vince's money on drugs. No, he didn't. The day he died, Tristan swore to me he still had all the money. Well, where is it then? He gave it to Reverend Grace for safekeeping. Tell me, Charles, are you single? Yes. I mean, no. Sort of. It's complicated. Oh, tell me more. I'm a big fan of complicated. Yes, I'd like to order 200 rubber ducks, please. Yes, I will. Yes, of course. Oh, darling, listen, you won't regret it. I promise you. That's a promise. OK, bye. You see, this is where my true talents lie. Good, honest work, like schmoozing businesses for free stuff for charity duck races when nobody ends up in prison or dead. Oh, I recognize that look. That's that Agatha's superficial and not as good as me look. Got that all into one look. I'm rather impressed with myself. Oh, voicemail. Peggy Slither. Oh, drunk again. She says she's got some genuine information about the murders for me. Uh, why, why are you still sitting there? Shouldn't you go and see her? No, because she's just lonely and desperate. And anyway, I have got Morris dancers to organise. Well, if you're not going to talk to Peggy, then I will. And look what happened the last time you made a call like that, Sarah. You're still a murder suspect. You definitely can't go. Then let me. And I thought we weren't doing any investigating together. And we won't be. I'll go and talk to her alone. Look, Sarah is my friend too, and I'm sitting here ordering bloody rubber ducks when I could be out helping clear her of murder. Agatha, 
You think that I think that I'm better than you. Let me prove you wrong. I mean, right. Monsieur Lacey, a treat for Peggy. Have a drink, have a seat. Not there! My husband died in that chair. Yes, I heard all about your husband from Agatha, but I'm not superstitious. And no to a drink, thank you. Now, what have you got to tell me? Mm, so masterful. You remind me of my husband. Don't go having a heart attack. I wasn't going to share this information with anyone else. But then my poor, dear Lizzie Jellop was murdered. Why would anyone want to kill Lizzie? She was so dull. Peggy, I haven't got all day. What is this vital information that you have? Naughty, naughty. Drink first, and then I'll tell you everything. Proof is that it's lethal. I keep lemonade for the kiddies and the ladies if Diddums would rather. No, no, it's fine. Fill her up. <laughs> Reverend Grace. You don't give up, do you? I, I have nothing further to say about Tristan Delon. Did Tristan Delon give you ten thousand pounds for safekeeping? Charlotte Belinge told me he did. Well, she's mistaken. I don't have it. Tristan must have been lying to her like he lied to everyone else. Darcy. You start it in love and then you finish it with them dying in front of you of a heart attack. Tune! Mm. I almost got married. Nearly had the ring on her finger and then... What's in the envelope, Peggy? Oh, don't worry about that now. The wedding. Church full of people, and then. Was I right, Peggy? Was I wrong? I don't know because I wasn't invited. It's <laughs> very odd. I've rung him several times, I've texted, and no answer. I'm sure he's fine, but if you're worried, this is Peggy's landline number. Right. See you around eight? Okay. Okay. Lovely. Peggy? James? Certainly not alive. <sighs> Never drinking Peggy Tigger's handling Chardonnay again. Do you think I should just let her sleep it off? You should let me sleep it off. <gasps> oh. Peggy. Hey. Hello. Hello. Hey, Peggy. <laughs> Why is the room going round and round? Did you see who it was? No. Well, whoever they were, they were wearing some kind of yellow jacket. Oh, wait. Sarah said that she saw someone at Tristan's cottage the night he was murdered in a yellow parka. <coughs> oh! Is that you, 
Charlie boy? No. I thought you were my fiance. You've got a fiance? Well, no. Well, I'm sort of engaged to Charles. I'll talk to you about it later. We're going to dinner at Sarah's house this evening to celebrate if you fancy joining us. I can't. I've got to go back to London. I just popped down to... To... Tell you... To tell me what? That... I got the New York job. You mean the Swindon job? No. The Swindon job's in New York. New York? So New York has in New York there's miles and miles across the Atlantic, New York. That New York? That's the one. Um... I'm really sorry for lying. I just didn't think you'd want me to go, and I'm not even sure that I want to go. Why not? Because my life is here. Because you're here, you silly moon. You have to go to New York. Seriously? Yes, you daft old tart. This is an amazing opportunity for you. Oh. And many, many amazing shopping opportunities for me. You know, if you're not happy for Roy, you don't want him to go, then why didn't you ask him not to? Because, much as it pains me to say it, maybe Tristan was right. Maybe love is all about sacrifice. Love is what got poor Liz Jellop murdered. Yeah, and Peggy Slither. We don't know that anyone killed Peggy. She was an alcoholic, far from healthy. It could have been natural causes. She was definitely murdered by someone wearing a yellow parka. Then why didn't yellow parka wearing man or woman murder James at the same time? I think we should tell Sarah tonight that we're not getting married. Maybe you're right. Surprise! Oh, crap. Exactly. I'm so sorry for lying to you. Oh, lying. It's not that bad, is it? <laughs> oh, by the way, Jess sends his love from Nigeria. There you are, lying again. <laughs> you know, this is probably really inappropriate at my own engagement party, but the afternoon at Liz Jellop's house, you didn't happen to see that person with the yellow parka again, did you? Uh, no. No, I didn't. Sorry. Have a drink. Hmm. <sighs> Are you okay? Yes, I'm fine. So has Alice met your mother yet? No, that's happening tomorrow at the duck race. Alice finds parties a bit much. Yes. I know how she feels. James? Oh, I'm on the water. Possibly forever. Um, just gonna... Yep. Well, I don't suppose you've remembered the information that Peggy had about Tristan. I can't remember anything. So drunk, maybe that poor woman wouldn't have been murdered. We don't know that anyone has been murdered yet. You don't believe that. I know you. Yes, you probably do. You know, this afternoon, just for a moment, I thought that you were... Yeah, I know. An experience. Hangover, like today, makes you question everything. I should have said this before. I was going to say it the other night. What? What were you going to say? Don't marry Charles. <sighs> Why not? <laughs> He's fun. He's full of life and, uh, and he likes me. And you know what? He's honest with me. I know where I am with Charles, so you tell me. Why? Why shouldn't I marry him? Because... Why? It's a very bad idea. Oh. Because it, it's foolish and impulsive. Well, it is 
romantic history, not to mention yours, is oh. doomed to end in failure. I see, right. So, um, were we just doomed to end in failure? What? I'm not talking about us. No. You're not, are you? I know that now. spent so much time and energy wanting to be with James Lacey. Being with James Lacey. Trying to get over James Lacey. I am now over James Lacey. I think I may even be over Carsley. That's why we're fantasy buying up Yada Terre in Bristol. Uh, we made a fantasy offer on a fantasy loft apartment just today. I told everyone at the party. Oh, well, that is definitely a fantasy because no fantasy fiancé of mine would put an offer in it on an apartment without consulting me first, just for future reference. Well... I shall say good night. Good night. Charlie boy. You don't fancy coming in for a couple of hours of fantasy online house hunting, do you? It's Bill. The pathologist just called. It's definitely another murder. Peggy's Lilla was suffocated to death. <sighs> and suddenly I'm not really in the mood for house hunting. No. Me neither. I don't need an apology, James. Good, because I'm not offering you one. I, I remember. This afternoon at Peggy's, before everything got messy, there was a small padded envelope on the coffee table in the living room. On the front, it said, to my darling Peggy, guard this with your life. Love, Tristan. We, we could go there tomorrow and find it. It's a crime scene. Tomorrow, there is going to be police everywhere. Tomorrow's too late. This really isn't my idea of a booty call. Oh, and here's your ex. It really isn't my idea of a booty call. The window. The window? The window? Charles will never get through that. Well, neither will you. No, but I will. Air at the brewery. The free beer they were supplying is no longer being delivered. We have no alcohol to offer people, no budget to buy any, and the villagers already hate me because they think I killed their favourite curate. Oh, they don't hate you. They might strongly dislike you, but they they don't hate. Oh, none of us are going to get through this day without any alcohol. Come on, Charles, think of something. I can think of something. I know we can get as much free alcohol as we like. There you go. Peggy's finest. 
We'll sell it with mixers. Unless you want the villagers to die of alcohol poisoning. Excellent idea. I shall market them as a cocktail. Dandelion Negronis. Here we come. Welcome to you, kindly sponsored by Vincer Enterprises. Mr. Vincer has given a huge amount of time and money to Carsley Charities. Illegal things you've done. Breaking into Peggy's is the most foolish and illegal. Somewhere, possibly even here, is a killer who's murdered three people, one of them in Peggy's house. I want to go to your wedding, not your funeral. What are you doing there? Looking for evidence. And before you ask, I didn't find any. Because if I did, I would be sharing it with you now. No, you wouldn't. How's Alice getting on with your mother? I wish Alice would just relax. Well, I might have something that could help her with that. One dandelion in the green, please. Oh, and make it a large one. In your dreams, Sonny. Hop it. I wondered whether your boss would show his face, what with him being suspected of murder. Mr. Vince's charity work is very important to him. He's not about to let the unfounded suspicions of an amateur detective deter him from doing his best for the community. If I were you, I'd keep an eye on Charlotte Bellinge. She's a highly predatory woman. As Tristan DeLong and Mr. Binzer both found out to their cost. Investigate her. Shall we have dinner later? <laughs> Charles. <laughs> I'd love to. If you ever need to talk, you know I'm here. Yeah. Thank you. What do you think you're doing? Honestly, I'm telling you, I'm going to play your Please stop it! You stop! You ain't taking orders from a murderer! No! Stuck up cow! Don't talk to my mum like that! Don't talk to me like that! Your mama's boy! A real man would stand up for his woman. Well, maybe you should go and find yourself a real man then. I found one, thank you. My married boss, who we've been bonking for years. What? I tried to resist him, but the truth is, I love Ronnie, and I will wait the rest of my life for him, if that's what it takes. Such a cliché. The secretary's so in love with her boss, she'll do anything for him. Of course. You're right. A secretary so in love with her boss that she would do anything for him. You are a genius! Agatha, where are you going? Nowhere in particular. You'd never leave a drama unless you were going to a bigger one.
Christ. That is blasphemy, Mrs. Vicar. Uh, Tristan had a picture of Jesus on the back of his phone case in this photo I've just seen on the internet. But the phone case he was using on the night he was with me said TB in big letters. I don't understand. He must have two mobile phones. And he received a call from the TB phone on the night he was killed. Maybe he had two phone cases. I don't know. I mean, surely the police would have checked his phone records. Sarah, are you sure you're not just misremembering? Uh, yes. I remember it being weird that he'd have a phone case with TB on the back when his initials are TD. TB? Terence Biles. Peggy Slither said that that was Tristan's real name, Terence Biles. Can you call Bill and check and see if Tristan had a phone name in the name of Terence Biles? Please, Sarah, I have to go. Oh, Agatha, you idiot. Looking for me, Miss Raisin? Well, join me for dinner, and then you can explain why you're following me. You think I'm in love with my boss? It's okay. I'm used to this kind of nonsense. If you're middle-aged and single, everyone assumes you must be the crazy, desperate one. I am loyal and protective of Richard Bincer. He's been very good to me down the years. And yes, I would do almost anything for him. But commit murder? No. I want to know more about this complicated relationship of yours. You're engaged, or maybe you're not. But either way, you're happy to have dinner with a dangerous divorcee like me. It's not great behaviour, is it? I think it's perfectly fine behaviour. Monogamy is hard. Hello, darling. Charles, this is Julian. Julian, I was just discussing with Charles how relationships can get stale, how just the two of you can become quite boring, and sometimes it's fun to involve other people. You'd like to try that, wouldn't you, Charles? You naughty boy. Castle Caps? Yes, I know. Well, it's Gustav's night off, so... Enjoy your dinner, did you? You've fallen for that tart bellinge, just like my... dear Tristan. Are you OK, Reverend Grace? No, of course I'm not bloody OK. Do I look OK? Bloody idiot. No. You leave that right where it is. That knife or gun. Or whatever weapon you're hiding in your pocket, I am making a citizen's arrest on you for the murder of Tristan Delon. And, just to be on the safe side, Liz Jellop and Peggy Slither. Oh. I don't have a knife or a gun. All I have is the 3,000 that's left of Richard Bincer's 10,000. And Tristan asked me to keep safe for him. Oh, hell. Where's the other seven? I spent it. Gambling on the horses. And the dogs and the football. And spread betting on Eurovision. <laughs> Can I ask? Did you call Tristan on his mobile the night he died? We didn't have that kind of relationship, but uh, half the women in Carsley did, so uh, maybe ask them. And what about Charlotte Bellinge? You said that I should investigate her. Why was that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm drunk enough to tell you that. Do you fancy another drink? I only live around the corner. And then I will tell you everything about Charlotte Bellinge. I want to talk. Not now, Lacey, please. I've just narrowly avoided an orgy 
and then had to take a mad gambling addicted vicar to the police station. It's been quite a day. Where's Agatha? She's been gone all afternoon and I'm worried. Well, don't be. She's off chasing some harebrained theory that Bince's secretary murdered Tristan and the others based on no evidence whatsoever. It's crazy. I doubt that. She thinks this woman is worth investigating, and she is. I know Agatha. Yes, well, I also know Agatha. And I know this case better than you, and I assure you she's wasting her time. Where's Agatha? Following Ellen Partle. Tristan had two phones. On the night he died, he received a call on the secret one from a payphone in Malmesbury, just around the corner from Ellen Partle's house. We'll follow you. Right, should we carry on with wine, then? Oh, absolutely. I think it would be rude not to. You know that that's Liz Jellop, not Peggy Slither. Well, I know that now, don't I? Bloody Mrs. Bogle. Screwing up the captions. Well, Mrs. Bogle has a lot to answer for. of everything. I didn't trust her instincts. I know our engagement was fake, but now... What? Your engagement wasn't genuine. What? No. But now I realise I am totally in love with her. I had to do it. Tristan said he had photos of my Richard at a sex club and he wanted a hundred thousand for it. Well, I knew it was lies. Of course I did. But even lies could ruin Richard's reputation. I didn't want to kill Tristan. All the others. Uh, I don't want to kill you either. I think I'm going to have to. And it's your own fault, meddling bitch. Wong and friends. Have you seen Agatha Ray's in this evening? Oh, we've just had dinner. We discussed her theory that I'm some kind of serial killer. Had a good laugh about it, and then she went home. Really? Perhaps we could come in and talk more. Of course. The second you have a warrant, you'll be very welcome. She's lying. Well, certainly. But I can't just force my way into a private house. I'm a police officer. Luckily, I'm not. Looking for this. Agatha. Charles, I knew we could count on you. Always. Ellen Partle, I'm arresting you on the suspicion of the murder of Tristan Dellen, Liz Jellop and Peggy Slither. And the attempted murder of my friend, Agatha Razor. <coughs> Ellen Partle was a deranged obsessive who sacrificed everything for love. You were right, darling. I will never doubt those hunches of yours again. Well, you will, but that's all right. So, Ellen Partle was in a relationship with Richard Bincer? No. Bincer says there was no relationship with her or Tristan, and there's no evidence to suggest he's lying. Without telling Bincer, she went to reason with Tristan that night after speaking to him on the phone, challenged him to produce these so-called photos. He told her he'd given them to a friend called Peggy Slither for safekeeping. But then he became abusive and threatening, and Ellen grabbed the paper knife and stabbed him in self-defence. Hello. Hi. I wanted to check on the patient and thank the patient for clearing my name. My pleasure. Bill is just telling the patient all about Ellen Partle. So now Tristan was dead, but 
Ellen was worried that these photographs might still be out there. She identified Peggy Slither from the photo in the parish magazine. But the captions were wrong. Exactly. So she follows Liz, thinking it's Peggy, then when the house was empty, broke in to find the photos, but then was disturbed by Liz when she came home early. It's only when she saw the news the next day that she realised she'd killed Liz Jellop by mistake. So she thought she had no choice but to kill Peggy Slither. She claimed she didn't want to. She kept watch on Peggy Slither's house, waited until Peggy was alone and passed out drunk. But then Peggy woke up and saw her looking for the photos. Let me get this straight. I have a couple of questions. No, that's enough. Sorry, guys, but I'm going to chuck you out now so that my fiancé can get some rest. Surely now the uh, investigation is over. You can drop this silly fake engagement. It's not fake. Or it won't be. As soon as she's recovered, I'm going to propose to her properly. Could you get my phone? I just want to call Bill and get him to go through everything again. I've hidden your phone. Because you need to rest. Okay. I am going shopping so that I can make us a celebratory dinner. Toodaloo. Hidden my phone. What have you forgotten? Mrs. Raisin, I'm so sorry for everything that's happened. I feel dreadfully responsible. Well, if that's what she wants, it could be great for her. Oh, it's wonderful you're being so positive about it, James. Thank you. No, I'm joking. I think it's terrible you're being so positive about it. When it's clear to everyone you're completely in love with Agatha, it's breaking your heart. My heart is not breaking, and I'm not in love with Agatha. I make it a strict policy of not being in love with women who are getting married to someone else. Bugger that. Sarah! Sorry, but this is ridiculous. You risk your life for Agatha going to see Peggy Slither. You search for her all day when she goes missing, while Charles Fraith has dinner with another woman. No, follow your heart, man, before it's too late. Honestly, you could have just sent them. No, no, I had to come and apologise in person for the nightmare that Ellen Bartle put you through. Not to mention James Lacey. Sorry? We must have been traumatised by his lucky escape. Uh, yeah. Y yes, he was. Right. How do they look? Dreadful, I'm sure. How did you know James Lacey was there? Bill Wong told me that... Ellen Partle had said that Peggy Slither was alone when she killed her. But she wasn't. James was there. How did you know that? The police don't even know that. It was you, wasn't it? You killed Tristan Delon and the others. Don't, Ruth! Stay where you are or I swear to God I'll kill you. I think you're going to do that anyway. Yes. Yes, I am. You're a smart woman, Mrs. Raisin. A lot smarter than Ellen Partle. We agreed she'd take the blame for the murders. And then when she got out of prison, I'd marry her. <laughs> I should have known I couldn't trust someone so unstable to get the story right. And what is the story? Oh, everything happened just as Ellen said it did. Except yes. I was having an affair with Tristan. And yes, he did have photos which could have destroyed my private and professional reputation, but I disposed of them, just as I'm about to dispose of you. I am sorry, but I've worked hard for what I've got, and I can't want it all destroyed. Agatha. You can't marry Charles. Could we maybe talk about this another no, time? No, no, I'm not going to wait a moment longer. We should have talked about this a long time ago. I love you, and I'm asking you to marry me. Again.
Have I missed something? Constable is very grateful that I cracked the case. She's also very annoyed at me that I cracked the case. <laughs> Maybe it's time to make it official. Become a professional private detective. You may have a very good point. Hello. Well, we'll wait outside. What about us? Should we make it official? That's why I came back to Carsley to ask you to marry me. Is it? So, why didn't you ask me before now? You seemed happy with Charles. Well, why shouldn't I be happy? Charles looked after me in Cyprus and, and here. Ellen Partle tried to kill me and Charles saved me. What? It doesn't matter. No, what? Tell me, what were you going to say? You broke down the door. You found me. It was you that saved me, not Charles. It was you. I'm just glad you were safe. I saw you with him, and it broke my heart. I thought about spending my life without you, and I wanted to die. I loved you too much to hurt you again when I thought that you were happy. So, I said nothing. I can't marry you, James. I'm kind of done with marriage. But if you fancied living in sin for the next 50 years or so, I'd be very much up for that. <laughs> Are we friends? Friends. James is one. For now. Charlotte, dinner tonight. Yeah. Yes, I think I can squeeze you in. If it is just you. Yo! <laughs> She's back. Roy, I thought I told you to take the job in New York. I took the job in New York. I'm not stupid, but I knew you couldn't live without me, so I will be selflessly splitting my working week between London and New York City. <sighs> it will be hell, but I am worth it. You are worth it. <laughs> Thank you. That's on Inside Out. <laughs> Agatha, haven't you got something to say? I do. There is a reason for this little gathering, and I know that we have all been here before. Oh, no. But James and I have been talking, and uh, I have an announcement to make. Not again. This is something I've thought about for quite some time now, and I feel very sure about it. I am becoming a professional, private investigator. I'll thank God for that. <laughs> <gasps> I knew you'd be happy. <laughs> it won't last. Heard that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs>